This is a quick little follow-up to yesterday's video, which is a follow-up to the previous day's video. But um, I want to show a little bit of the tone stack in practice for those uh, for whom it was all a little too abstract. If you don't have a Fender yourself, or if you were confused by one, if you used one for the first time. Um, and at the end of this, I'm going to put a little semi-retraction and correction about uh, something I don't think I explained well at all in yesterday's video on tone stacks, which could lead to some... Uh, misunderstandings. More on that in a bit. Let's go to the music. So I've got a 79 Super Reverb here. I've got a Strat. I'm on the neck pickup. I've got the bright switch off, the volume just over two, Super Reverb's loud, uh, treble mids bass, all at noon. You know, five and a half is noon on these because it goes one to ten. Um, there is no zero. And uh, we've got the master volume for this particular amp on ten. And the reverb, just under three, just barely under three. And uh, with it all neutral and balanced, sounding like this. Huh, I picked up a, a pick at random and it, I don't know where this pick came from. It's a floppy little 0.73. And it just wasn't where I expected it to be for that for that C. Anyway, um, let's keep going. Actually, I'm in E flat. That was a B. Sorry. Very full, very rich. No one particular frequency is jumping out at you. If I go from the neck to uh, uh, bridge middle. Everything's good. If I turn the bright switch on, that can be a little bit hard, particularly with this thin pick I picked up. Um, before I change to a different pick, it's okay if you use the bright switch to turn the treble down to balance that out a little bit. And you'll find the sweet spots where it's not too rolled off. Conversely, conversely, if you don't use the bright switch, you can turn the treble up a little bit. You'll still have a nice clarity in the highs, you're just not going to have that glassiness. Now, I mentioned that the uh, Deluxe Reverb and the Princeton and the left channel of a Super Reverb and a Pro don't have a mid spot and the mids on those amps are fixed pretty much where on a super reverb or twin the mids be, would be here just below eight so this is let me turn this to noon this is more what you get with the deluxe reverb <laughs> if i turn the mids down to noon you can really hear that shift it's a little bit congested up that high but that's one of the sounds of that era Versus. Now, another oddity of the Fender Tone Stack on the amps like a Deluxe Reverb, they don't have a mid spot. If you turn the treble all the way down and the bass all the way down, you get this sound, which is not bad, it's just not very interesting. But on the amps which do have a mids control, you turn them all the way down, you get this sound. Which is no sound, because at this point, this bass pot, which is wired as a variable resistor, is at ground. The mids pot, which is also wired as a variable resistor, is at ground. And the treble is a voltage divider, turned all the way to counterclockwise, so it's also at ground, so the input of the next tube is actually grounded out right now. You get nothing. You don't get that in a Marshall, and you don't get that 
in a uh, fender that does, that does not have a mid spot. It's a peculiarity of this thing. It means you can also hear just what each one sounds like by itself, kind of. Not really the prettiest sound. Uh, on that note, remember I said that you aren't uh, really boosting anything when you turn it up. Uh, you're just not cutting it as much. So on the treble, by itself or when really prominent, that's a really harsh frequency. It sounds hard. You got to just fine tune it with things. I would not go any higher than what you see there. That's pretty dang bright. Now here's the thing. If you want it to sound brighter than that but not be painful, you can turn down the bass. And what you're doing is you're saying, hey, there'll be less low frequency content, therefore the treble will be more audible. And that will usually sound better, especially in a band context, than leaving the bass alone and, quote, boosting the treble. And uh, the temptation is to say, just turn it all up, man, just dime it. Just turn all the knobs to 10. And you might think that that would be the more natural sound, too, because that would be more like the signal coming from the preceding stage. It's not. Um, that sound is going to have some distortion and nonlinearity because it's driving the next stage much harder than Fender designed it to. And because of the slope resistor, you're going to have a big increase in treble and upper mid in a hard way. <laughs> I don't know if that translates uh, to the 57, but in the room with it, sitting in front of it, it makes my eyes hurt. It's just, it's just, nah, 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 really ugliness. So try to live somewhere closer to the middle on each of them, unless you're going for an extreme sound. You know, if you plug into a, a 60s or 70s Fender and it doesn't sound pretty darn good with a treble middens and bass at noon. <laughs> Something's wrong with that app. And from there, subtle variations are very nice. Before we get to the thing that really bothers me, here's one thing that aggravated me and just was bugging me. First of all, I had all the pots backwards in yesterday's video. And this one's backwards here because I had copied and pasted from uh, an existing uh, program, an existing schematic that I had, and one of the pots in that was intentionally back wired backwards, and uh, when I copied and pasted, that was the pot I grabbed, and I wasn't paying attention, uh, but lug one is the one that goes to ground. Uh, the other thing that really aggravated me was right here. Uh, I did not show uh, the base pot being wired correctly. I showed it wired as a voltage divider as opposed to a variable resistor. Now, the actual schematic and how a lot of fenders are wired it just goes to the wiper from pin 1 of the treble. But it is better practice to uh, go ahead and uh, tie pins, uh, lugs 2 and 3 together like that. That way, should the pot fail open, uh, there'll still be some resistance. You know, if, if, if the, not if the pot fails open, sorry, if the wiper were to lift, uh, you would still have a connection to the pot. You won't lose sound. That's that's more of a uh, nicety in this situation. In some parts of amps, you really want to make sure you never lose that resistance. So these are just kind of best practice things to do. Um, but that was all just kind of aggravating to me that I sent something out in the world with the mistake and uh, just a little bit of sloppiness. Let me get to the thing that I really wanted to talk about, though. That's much more important. The thing that I really did uh, kind of mess up on is this high-pass filter here. 
uh, where I showed all the frequencies above a certain point going to the output and all the other frequencies below a certain point. I just said going to ground because I didn't want to get into a whole bunch of technical stuff and DC is, uh, appears to AC sources as equivalent to ground and stuff. Uh, it gets really technical and to really describe this stuff you have to learn a specialized vocabulary that's uh, outside the time frame that I have to make these things and probably outside the interest of most people. But on this high pass filter it's more accurate to say that all the stuff below that set, set, set frequency just never makes it through the capacitor to begin with. It just gets stuck on this side of the capacitor and all this stuff gets out here. Um, and uh, I was just trying to make a larger point of saying, hey, this is how we divide the frequencies and this is where we divide it and where they go. Uh, but I introduced something that was just really inaccurate and an inadequate um, um, easy explanation. It's hard to sum this stuff up and uh, there's a reason I'm doing this kind of stuff and I'm not working at Caltech as an instructor. But if you really want to know this stuff, uh, you can take pretty much any basic electronics course and after the first six weeks you'll know this and you'll know why and you can bore people at parties with it, just like I do here. Isn't that fun?